Hi everyone, this is your host Maheen and uh, we're back uh, again with another insightful episode. Today we are delving into the realms of company culture, readership, and the nuances of scaling small businesses in the tech sector. As small businesses across Canada continue to be the driving force of innovation and economic growth, understanding these facets can become crucial for their success. In today's episode, we are thrilled to have Chris Collins, a transformative leader behind people to go With over two decades in the IT staffing and services industry, Chris has been instrumental in fostering an employee-centric culture, propelling the company to new heights. His journey from people to goes first employee to becoming part of ownership team and his recent accolades, including being named a top 100 staffing leader to watch in 2024, make his insights invaluable for today's discussion. Without further ado, let's welcome Chris. Good afternoon and welcome to the Canadian SME Small Business Podcast. How are you today? I'm well. Thank you for having me. Chris, I mean, your journey with uh, people to go from its inception to becoming a leader in the IT services uh, is truly inspiring. And we are quite eager to dive into your experiences, first of all, and then, you know, really understand your leadership port- uh, philosophy and your approach to building a thriving company culture. Um, let's kind of begin by really understanding how to build a vibrant employee centric culture, because the foundation of any successful company lies in its culture, particularly one that prioritizes its, its employees. Um, Chris, could you please share your approach to creating an employee centric culture at people to go Yes. Well, my approach to creating an employee-centric culture really started with redefining our core values. Our original core values were very customer-centric, and there was nothing wrong with that, but we needed to focus more on enhancing the employee experience. So re-engineered our core values in 2020 after getting my ownership stake. Five core values, action, respect, transparency, collaboration, and professional development. And it was pivotal that myself, my partner, and the leadership team embody these values, setting an example for our staff to follow. It didn't take long for them to jump on board. Um, one other thing we did that I think is very unique is we we established a culture committee composed of volunteers from each team in the organization who focus specifically on enhancing the employee experience and engagement with complete support from the owners. In fact, we're not even involved in this committee. I'm not to this day. I'm not 100% sure who's actually in the committee. We wanted this to be a committee of the people for the people. Mm-hmm. And I believe our staff should control and influence our culture, not the owners or leadership team. And they've been doing a remarkable job of being very innovative on how they bring value to each other and the rest of the company. I mean, it shows. I really want to extend a heartfelt congrats to you, Chris, for being uh, named a top 100 staffing leader to watch in 2024. I mean, it, it shows that your transformative leadership at people to go has not only fostered an employee-centric culture, but has also propelled the company to new heights since you started it as its first employee. Now, uh, if you build onto this a bit more, Chris, how have you seen this culture directly contribute to your company's growth and success? Well, part of the inspiration for having an employee-centric culture really centers around what Sir Richard Branson says, you know, take, take great care of your staff and they will take great care of your customers. And at people to go, we've proven that to be true day in and day out. Employee satisfaction, morale, engagement improved, and our customer, and of course, our customer performance metrics and year-over-year financials increased, facilitating our company growth. The investments we made in our staff, our our greatest assets, are definitely paying off, not just in the short term, but the long term. Chris, your strategies really underline the importance of, you know, investing in people as the key to building a sustainable and thriving business. And on this note, you know, I really want to connect with our listeners as well. Listeners, it's it's quite clear that the heart of every successful business uh, beats through its culture. And it's the silent language that communicates your brand's values, uh, you know, the brand's mission and the vision to both your team and your customers. So as we reflect on Chris's insights, let's, let's really ask ourselves, you know, how does our own business culture speak? speak to those around us and remember that a strong culture not only attracts the right talent but also the right customers. Uh, Moving on um, Chris uh, let's learn about delivering consistent value to customers because in a competitive market delivering consistent value to customers is what sets a company apart. How does people to go ensure it consistently brings value to its customers? So this is a great topic. Uh couple of days. First of all, we have a very unique business model. We are a wholesale technology service provider. So we actually help technology companies provide cost-effective and value-added services and solutions to their clients across North America. So we bring consistent value to customers by being very collaborative, consultative. I think this really separates us from our, from our competitors. So we help our customers understand their clients' pain points, their challenges, their unique needs. 
we gather, we help them gather requirements and determine the expected business outcomes. And then we provide the right IT resources, services, and solutions to meet those needs and deliver success. Mm -hmm. Essentially, people to go doesn't win unless our customers win. Their success is our success. And our business model focuses on customer enablement. And modestly, we have a year over year win ratio of over 50%, which reflects how we help customers be consistently successful utilizing our services. These are some great insights. I mean, they really reveal the critical role of, uh, you know, customer customer centric strategies in driving business success. But Chris, you know, what would add a little cherry on top of the conversations that we just had would be an example. Could you please share an example where this focus on customer value led to a significant win for your company? Uh, there's many, there's many significant deals that brought a lot of value to customers, but there's one that stands out that I'm particularly proud of. It was just a, a monumental effort with our project management and resourcing teams. So this, this example is uh, really stands out is a customer came to us at the 11th hour on a very large enterprise deal and needed 110 technicians across Canada to start in less than four business days for a massive desktop uh, laptop upgrade project for, again, a very large enterprise end client. Not only did we align 110 quality technicians within four business days, but we had uh, additional backups just in case. And in total, we used over 246 technicians over five, five and a half months to deliver an exceptional business outcome and experience for our customer and their client. The reason we were able to do this is that people to go, we build and manage a massive technology talent pool that we draw from to meet our customers on demand resourcing needs. Uh, given these IT skills gaps and, and labor shortages we face in North America, you know, we were founded to provide a reliable, sustainable, and on-demand national resources solution. So thankfully, our talent pool was put to the test, but we came through with shining colors. And it wasn't just about aligning the right resources at the right time, at the right price. It was about, the, about delivering that successful outcome for our customer and their client, which we did. Right. And talking about the top talent and retaining it, I mean, in today's fast paced world, I mean, finding and retaining the right talent can literally feel like searching for a needle in a haystack. But before we even begin to, you know, kind of understand how to navigate the talent acquisition challenge, um, I want to connect with our listeners one more time. So listeners, you know, as we uh, as we learn from Chris's highlights, uh, we understand that, you know, it's not just about finding talents, also about creating an environment where talent wants to stay and thrive. So think about what makes your business a magnet for top talent. And are you offering, you know, growth, recognition, and a sense of purpose to your team? Because at the end of the day, it's the team that is your biggest asset in navigating the business landscape. Um, Chris, um, you know, as we as we kind of, you know, emphasize on how finding and retaining top talent is more crucial and challenging than ever in today's volatile job market, what strategies has people to go implemented to attract top IT talent? Well, there are many strategies we we employ day in and day out to um, to attract top talent. But one that really stands out for us is, and this has been foundational from day one. When I was hired as the first employee of this company, I came out of an IT school in Vancouver, and I was hungry to put my skills and my, my educational skills um, to good use. But we had Canada and the box of the world at that time hit an economic downturn in 2001, so it's very difficult for entry level people to find jobs in IT when there were massive workforce reductions going on. The same story is true right now. Um, so when the founder hired me, one of the first things he tasked me uh, with was where are we going to get our source of supply? Where are we going to, how are we going to build our talent pool? I said, the same place you found me in IT school. IT schools represent a self-replenishing source of supply. They are producing the next generation in skilled IT talent. So we have formed, we formed partnerships with a, a significant number of educational institutions across the country, public and private schools, and have been hiring students and graduates for over 23 years, of course, me being the first one. Um, overall, we've hired over a thousand students and graduates um, to support us internally and our customers across the country, every province so far. So for me, that's that's extremely important, especially because more and more Canadians, when they graduate from you know the top colleges and universities in this country are now staying in Canada. Right. right. Our domestic talent pool from a tech talent ecosystem perspective actually outpaced the U.S. for the first time in 2022, mm -hmm. which is which is indicative of the quality of our resources up here. So for me, tapping into that self-replenishing source of supply with educational institutions is absolutely essential for our resources strategy. No, I love the approach because it really offers a blueprint for 
balancing talent acquisition with culture, uh, you know, pres preservation. So, which is, I think, a key for any growing business. But talking about growing a business, I mean, you know, it, scaling a business requires both strategic planning and a deep understanding of market needs. Chris, what have been the pivotal strat strategies that in scaling people to go successfully? And what challenges did you face during the scaling process? And how did you overcome them? Yeah, our, our business model is interesting because we go through peaks and valleys depending on how, how much business the customers are, are sending our way. And of course, we, we work very hard and smart to earn their businesses. But in order to scale our business as quickly as we needed to, we employed a strategy to make our staff cross-functional. What this means is we've trained them to work in other teams within the organization, able to move back and forth seamlessly between these teams, which has allowed us to scale quickly and efficiently especially for larger deals with minimal to no disruption to our business internally. Mm -hmm. And one of our core values, as I mentioned at the outset of this conversation is professional development. Basically it's a, it's a process of continuous improvement that we live by internally. So we invest significantly in the training of our people, which makes them more marketable to themselves and allows them to make a more marketable or market, a more measurable contribution to the growth of our business. So mm -hmm. the fact that we can have people move between our PMO, our service, and our recruitment team so seamlessly has been absolutely pivotal in helping our scale our business. Well, these are some really practical lessons on growth and adaptation in the business world. But the IT staffing and services industries is ever evolving uh, with the advent of new technologies and changing market demands. Um, Chris, where do you see the future of IT staffing and services heading, especially for small businesses? Well, the consumption of IT uh, on a consumer commercial level in Canada continues to grow as it does in most places in the world. This creates a demand for IT resources and IT services. Unfortunately, the supply of IT resources currently does not meet the growing demand. Hence the reason why staffing companies are typically very busy. Now, the economic downturn has softened the labor market. So there's, there, were, there was a lot of workforce reductions in the country, unemployment rate rose. But as the economic downturn diminishes um, and companies start investing again, the demand is going to absolutely explode. Uh, so we are very well positioned at people to go to help customers, um, large and small. And one of our big areas of focus is working with small business. We are the beating heart and the economic engine of this country. I think the last data I saw was 99.2% of the companies in Canada, especially in the technology space, are small businesses. And we want to help those small businesses grow and thrive. But they need they need a virtual bench of technology resources that they can tap into to help facilitate their company growth and deliver outcomes for their clients. So I, I see a significant focus on IT resourcing moving forward because of the skills gaps and labor shortages we face. And truth be told, mm -hmm. our federal and provincial governments haven't done enough um, to ensure that we have a sustainable pipeline of talent in this country. That our population only grows through immigration. Immigration slowed down significantly during the pandemic, the first couple of years in particular. So now they're trying to fast track work visas and permanent residency status for skilled workers. So we can continue to be a leading global technology integrator, which Canada most certainly is. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like the demand is, is, is quite frankly, it's never really end. It's going to continue growing. The question is, do we have enough resources to meet the increasing demand? And that's where people to go steps in. Now, Chris, your vision for the future of IT staffing services, it not really, really highlights, not only highlights the upcoming trends, but also prepares businesses for the road ahead. Uh, before we wrap up, Chris, could you please share a piece of advice for aspiring entrepreneurs in the tech industry? A couple of pieces of advice. Uh, <laughs> I'm a bit old school. Uh, I believe that people buy from people, not just companies. So build and nurture you know, healthy relationships with your customers, earn trusted advisor status with them and embrace a consultative mindset where you're really, really outcome focused. But first you really want to understand what those challenges and pain points are that your customer or their client faces and how you can resolve those. Um, I often see things in a very, uh, a lot of co companies operate in a very transactional sales model where they don't really understand what's driving that need in the first place. We take a very different approach. And this, and this helps ensure that we are aligning the right resource services solution to drive that successful outcome for our customer and their clients. Mm -hmm. So I think if people really embrace this, you know, again, the people buy from people, because right now there's, there's still a bit of a hangover with complacency about getting in person, like meeting people in person, but build and nurture relationships, you know, earn your customer's business, bring as much value and be creative and innovative in how you do that. And part of that for us at people to go is, is embracing the consultative and outcome focused mindset. 
Thank you so much, Chris, for sharing your invaluable experiences and insights with us today. I mean, your journey and your leadership at people to go they're both testament to the impact of building a strong company culture and leadership philosophy. So thank you for your time. My pleasure. Thank you. Listeners, as we conclude today's enriching conversation with Chris, it's quite evident that uh, navigating the complexities of the small business growth, especially in the IT sector, is no small feat. It requires vision, adaptability, and an unwavering commitment to both people and tech. So to all the entrepreneurs and all the business leaders that are tuning in, please uh, take these insights as a beacon uh, to guide us toward a, not just growth, but meaningful and sustainable success. And together, we can redefine what it means to be a small business in Canada. Uh, again, thank you for tuning in. Uh, please be sure to subscribe to the Canadian SME Small Business Podcast at CanadianSME.ca for more inspiring stories and expert advice. Special thank you again would be extended to our guest, Chris Collins, as well as to our partners, um, exclusive banking partner, RBC, shipping partner, UPS, uh, accounting software partner, Zero, email partner, Constant Contact, and IAG Business Edge, our hospitality partner. Your support is truly appreciated. Uh, until next time, keep striving for excellence and remember that success of your business starts with the strength of your team. Thank you.